rock and roll. Now I'm going to share the screen. Here we go. What have we got? What have we got? Oh, now, there we go. Well, welcome, welcome along to the Tuesday afternoon um, session. Um, thank you, some familiar faces. You either like it or you've got nothing else to do. I, I, you know, and, and I've, you know, I've left with no choice but to decide you like, you like coming back for more. You know, and, and it's great to see uh, to see uh, familiar faces. All those five pound notes I sent in the post have had the desired effect. Yeah, uh, you know. Um, actually, I was going to get my mother to come on it. She was going to come on it. I said to my mother, she's eighty four. I said, Mother, will you? What are you doing on Tuesday afternoon? She said nothing. I said, Would you go on the computer and and join a webinar? She said, Simon. She said, Yes, of course I will. And then she said, By the way, what's a computer? So. Uh, Anyway, right, that's it. No, that's it. No, no, there's not much jesting. We've got a lot to cover. We've got a lot to cover today. Now, let's start. We're going to attempt something without a sa aid of a safety net this afternoon. We're going to flick between the presentation and some activity on LinkedIn. Oh, my goodness. So there, there could be, I'm going to give you a bit of a warning. It might not go according to plan. So let's get that in there first. Right. Now, the other thing as well, this might, for some of you, and I'm going to apologise, never start with apology, but I will do. This might be a little bit simplistic, but we're going to work on the assumption that, that people are fairly newish and it is a sort of beginner's kind of guide to the world of LinkedIn. Is that all right? So, not all right. Let's, uh, let's uh, start. Let's, let's start up. Right. What have we got for? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. We've got the uh, start. That's a good thing. So we're going to, as always, we will be uh, recording it. Uh, so for, for those of you who like to second helping, there is the chat line. So if any questions, fire away. We've got the normal at signs uh, for those of you on Twitter, uh, as far as my company concerns, and the, the program that we're running uh, through Grow My SME through Humber Growth Lab. So uh, right, well, so as always, we like to start with a little bit of quiz. You know, to get everybody sort of um, everybody warmed up, and it's only a small one thing. We've got so much to cover. Here we go. The average person has seven social media accounts. True or false? Now, how many of you now are looking at your fingers, thinking, well, "I've got that. I've got that. I've got that. I've got that." And the answer, of course, I had to be. I had to be. Yeah, oh, I know who's, who's on the chat line. Who's on the chat line? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, so we've got a few guests already. Right. Next one, a little quick one. Which <laughs> leading question here? Leading question. Which platform? What platform? No this is the best for driving leads: Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn? Well, you knew that. So that's a little bit of a hint. Yeah, trying to justify it for this afternoon. Yes. <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. Another one here. Another one here. LinkedIn is older than Facebook and Twitter. True or false? Hmm. Oh, let's have a little think. True or false? Yeah. Okay. If I could push buttons, I'd be dangerous. It's true, and we're gonna have a little bit of history toy in a minute. Come on then. What's the average length of time somebody spends on social media? Those of you teenagers will know it's a lot more than this. Here we go. Drum roll. Oh, and that is out of date. Look, it's out of date by a little period of time. So I think it's, <laughs> believe it or not, move closer to the dreaded three hours. Yes, there we go. So how much of that time, here's a question for you, how much of that time is spent on LinkedIn? Hmm. Well, we're going to answer that question now. So how to use LinkedIn to get more sales was the uh, today's uh, entitled webinar. So here we go. Very start. Look at that. Or everything you need to know about digital on one slide. World's population. How many phones there are? How many internet users? How many people on social media? So we've got about a fifty percent penetration on social media, and you can see in a moment that LinkedIn. Well, where it sits. Busy slide. Busy slide alert. Starting Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and onwards. And you can see that in the United, the United Kingdom, there's estimated to be, roughly speaking, it's about slides a year old, about 20 million users. The demographics are typically 30 to 49. 
major purpose professional blogs and chat, business development, and its downside, you could argue, there's limited interaction. But actually, of all social media platforms, it's a, probably the one that's probably the most well defined in terms of its out in terms of its audience, in terms of its interaction, and in terms of the outcomes. So some people often refer to it as the forgotten child. So let's uh, that's the starting point. And there are the headquarters, no less, in California. You know, it doesn't always, I think that photo has been doctored. It doesn't, sun, sun doesn't shine every day there, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's California dreaming for you. Right, here we go. So here's a little quiz, not a quiz, here's, here's the history. It was founded in 2002 by uh, some former employees of PayPal. Critically, uh, it was actually acquired by Microsoft in 2017. So actually LinkedIn as part of a Microsoft search, if you're using the Microsoft search engines, it actually has, is very powerful. And look, 20,000 employees, 33 officers, a rather large number of members, 690 million, and it, it LinkedIn is in 24 languages. It critically, and more recently, like unfortunately, like many businesses, lost about 6% of its workforce um, as a result of a, a downturn. And it began life principally as a recruitment platform, but I think it's morphed into so much of that. And you know, one, one evening I was a bit, bit, bit chat, bit, bit, I'm going off on a tangent here. One evening I was channel surfing and I, I found this program on LinkedIn and it was, it was an interview with the chief executive. And he was asked the question, where did LinkedIn go to recruit their staff? You know what the answer was? LinkedIn. So it's quite uh, interesting how uh, um, we use your own tools to find your own staff. So that's a very quick history about LinkedIn. Go through some very quick basics. So it is considered to be a professional community. That's their words, not mine. And this is how it works. Not good. It, LinkedIn allows members, both workers and employers, so you can have an individual account and a company account, to create profiles and connections to each other in an online social network. In effect, members can invite anyone, whether they're an existing member or not, to become a connection. Members can invite anyone to become a connection. We'll come back to that. And this is how it works. You have, there you are on the left hand side, and you will have first line connections, people you are connected to. You have second line connections, who are the friends in effect of first line. And then you have more distant connections with third line connections. So let's work on a very quick mathematical assumption. Let's assume you have a thousand first line connections and your first line connections each have a thousand. So how many people could you potentially connect to with or, or if you posted something and everybody shared it? The answer, a lot, million. And imagine if the second line connections had a thousand as well. So you in effect would reach a billion people. And this is the issue about the old classic Kevin Bacon, the old six degrees of separation. With LinkedIn, it's estimated to be much closer to four. So you are, we'll, we'll see a little bit later how easily you can connect with other people. So that's very much simply in 30 seconds, how LinkedIn works. And this is the essence of today's webinar. We're gonna go through four items, how to create a winning profile, how to make the network work for you, how to be kept top of mind and to find out what's working. So we're going to go through these four key areas. Now, first things first, you've got to think about how your profile might be reflected on social media and how, how you may choose to represent yourself on each of the individual platforms, as Alan Partridge has kindly done for us. So, this is very much about that magic word which you've heard me speak about over the last number of weeks about brand. So ideally your profile should reflect your image, your mission, your values, oh, and back to again, and your mission again. So it's the idea, it is very brand representative. So 
first rule of LinkedIn, in, in my humble opinion, is that I would, for, uh, uh, I would find it very difficult to justify remaining anonymous. Because members with a profile photo receive 14 times more profile views. So those of you who are watching are probably not have an image. I think it's pretty hard in some ways to justify. However, if you wish to remain private, there are ways of doing that. So my first piece of advice is to get a professional photograph taken. And I'll show you some LinkedIn profiles now the next few minutes, give you an idea about just some tips in terms of your brand and your image. First things first, make sure it looks like you. Now I'm in danger of going into the world of online dating here and, and making comments there about people misrepresenting themselves in that particular arena. But this is a form, you could argue, of professional dating. So make sure I think the image looks like you. And there's a lot to be said for showing your teeth. That's metaphorically, not physically, so to, sh to smile. I think it's been well proven that people like to deal with somebody who's considered to be warm, friendly and approachable. So you can make your own judgment about Caroline. Secondly, there's a lot to be said for having a high resolution image. So in this situation, Zach has gone down black and white route and he's taken an, in, an image that's high resolution. I'm going to go also to talk about the bit at the top, which is the, um, the background which I don't think is really appropriate in that situation because it's not just about the image, it's also about the background. So Jared here has actually used the LinkedIn default background, as you can see, and waving the mouse over it. But the image there is estimated it should be taking ideally 60% up of the frame, not appearing like a little blot on the horizon. And ideally, <laughs> to be the only person in the picture. So again, Tom's taken at the frame, high resolution image, he's smiling, and then he has a very welcoming background picture as well, but there's no confusion. Sometimes you do see people with dogs and children and other people, group photos. I would suggest that was possibly not the, the most effective photograph to use. Interesting enough here, Leia has chosen the right expression. You mentioned about this, and I think this of all the profiles you've seen in the last two minutes is probably the most powerful. I'll leave you to make your own mind up there. It's a great personal photograph, but the background picture is representing what she does, representing her brand, and you may describe that as an action image and really interesting image. Whereas if you flick back, not sure a lovely lake picture is representing a human resources specialist, but a talent and cult lead, it shows what she does. So but a great image and a, quite interesting to see um, um, when you look through the others, which I'll show you this afternoon. Joe. Joe, 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 what were you thinking? I, I, personally, I think that's highly distracting. My eyes aren't drawn to Joe. They're drawn to all the other things going on in the background. Whereas here, with Leia, I'm with her. But avoid the distracting backgrounds. Here's an interesting one. I would recommend that you part of your brand wear what you'd wear at work. And here is somebody, Megan, global business operations recruiter at Google. Come back to titles in a moment. Default background, but she's very cash. They, maybe is that your brand, that your image? But I'll be wearing what you work. So if you are in, say, PPE or you're a policeman or whatever world you're in, in that you might want to choose your uniform or what you'd wear at work. And here are things not to do. He does look a bit like that guy on Coronation Street. I can't remember if it's Steve. So yeah, not ideal. That is his image. Possibly not the greatest brand representation. 
this particular gentleman, we've plunked him out. He does look a little bit like that character, for those of you who remember the film, Re Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs. Sort of Michael Masden, Mr. Pink, I think he was, Mr. Character. So possibly not the suggested message. And here you are, please, please, please. Selfie with a confusing background. I think that might be taboo. So first things first, brand image, the starting point. The next thing, and you're creating your profile, is to create a headline that ensures the right people are finding you. So you may wish to think about keywords and terms you wish to be found for. And I'll go through some illustrations. Four things in terms of creating a winning headline. Know your audience. Well, the classic rules of marketing is to always think from your customer's or prospect's perspective, not necessarily yours. How is it perceived? You may wish to highlight your USP. I would, it would be unwise, to, possibly from various different ways, but not to try and over elaborate, to try and impress with big words. That's completely pantheistic. And uh, not also not to, uh, to try and boast. So, uh, so I think careful about four rules there in creating your winning headline. And yes, show and don't tell. And I'll explain that m methodology in these next few images. So we look at Ali. Now look at that as a fantastic image, both in the foreground and in the background. And look how the words she's using to describe herself. A Forbes AI innovator of the year, artificial intelligence to Amazon, 100,000 followers, and she's offering opportunity to tweet her. And she's using the vertical lines to segment those. So it's quite a powerful um, uh, headline there because she's telling you what you do, what to do, what she does, and she's almost very invitational. And a great image. So that's quite a, it gets good, that gets top marks. And then we go to Nadia. Again, a fantastic image of her great smiling picture. But again, Forbes 30 under 40, building the next generation of customer insights. She's hiring. The image I like, but it does go against the background image, goes against potentially the boastful element. You pay your money, you take your chance, but it tells you a lot about what Forbes does and the impact there. So worthwhile, very powerful background image. Here we go, in slightly different route. Now, who said LinkedIn wasn't for social media influencers? You've got Jen here. She's got 33 million followers. She's an entrepreneur. And then she's got, she's got her brand in the background. Not 100% sure what she does, but the fact she's in a company, Jim Looks, probably is giving us an insight. Again, a different route in terms of the way that the headline is written. And Max, he's the founding partner at GrowthX. So it's a Twitter handle, and he's telling, he's describing what he does. I help companies and countries commercialize innovation, startups, getting products to market. So again, he's an open, he's a, you know, but his image, you could argue, is, is not ideal, but again, focus very much on the headline. And Sujan here, co-founder at Milkshake, is hiring. So he's using his headline to actually recruit. We're hiring sales rep and back-end developers. Well, a fantastic way of actually you know, trying to recruit staff. Maybe his image, you might uh, wish to defer, but that's the brand and that's how he represents himself. So you can use your headline, your description in lots of different ways, but it is keyword friendly. Well, the, the final one I'll show you is Morgan there, CEO, co-founder, largest digital millennial news. And there, there she is in the background doing her thing. Again, it's all about brand, about perception and obviously for, for her particular business. So, so that's the image, your brand, and using your headline wisely, judiciously, and it, both of them can naturally be changed, your experiment. Key thing now is to think about your summary in your profile. 
And remember that LinkedIn profiles with summaries get 10 times more profile views. So we're going to show some summaries now. There's some things to think about when you're writing it. There's a lot to be said for starting with a catchy opening. You use optimized search terms. So whatever your business is, you may wish to, to actually use the search terms very descriptive. So if you're an accountant, you use accountant. If you're a tax advisor, you use tax advisor. But you've got the opportunity to inject some personality, to give it some context, and actually to mention what you do. So the summary is absolutely critical. So how to get yourself found. Now, Desmond is a sales leader. All right, the penguins may not be a thing, but look, you know, I began my career with a simple idea. I got anything like as long as I have other people get what they want first. Very powerful opening line. It's often said that people will not read it if it's layers and layers and layers of text. A simple, short, powerful sentence. Daryl here, again, apologies for being American, if you're, uh, in terms of terminology, <laughs> but if your SMB, our word, is not growing as fast as it, could, it should, it's likely because of one of these reasons. Sales are unpredictable, trust the thought, and he's going into it in very simple, readable English. Here, a final one I'll show you. This is putting a lot of personality in here. This gentleman, apologies for the slide, it doesn't cover his name, spent eight years pursuing a career in stand-up comedy, appearing in Comedy Central, etc., and then realizing my children like seeing their father and not starving. He's telling a very personal story, as well as weaving in his background. And then he goes on to talk about how he's actually helped people grow their sales. So really powerful stuff. I'm interested in him, him. So you go from Desmond to Daryl and to our comedic friend. It's very much a narrative, a story. Maybe what you might wish to do is actually to get one or two people to actually look at your profile, outsiders, and actually say, what does it actually tell you? Okay. And final example, I really like it. Raphael, image, brand in the background, and he's an ex-corporate lawyer telling his story about what he does. So you will get a copy of the slides, so you may wish to actually borrow some of the ideas. Can't say plagiarize, we can borrow things. Didn't hear that, right. So, but what you can do, so you've got your brand image, you've got your background, you've got your headline, but you can support everything you do by seeking recommendations, which will verify the work that you or the skills that you're purporting to have. Oh my goodness. Shall I show you how to ask for a recommendation? Ooh, right, let's see if this works. Yeah, let's hope that screen sharing stopped. I'm going to reshare the screen. Let's hope this works. Uh oh. I'm going to look for thumbs up. Is that working? I hope so. Anyone going to give me a thumbs up to see if that's working? Is that working? Yep. Yeah. Right, let's go. Right. Now this, um, forgive me, not intended to be egotistical. This is my profile. But I just want to show you how to ask for a recommendation. This is one I prepared earlier. This is what I just, this is what a gentleman I know. Alan Rice is a, is a brewer in Hull. Okay. You know, it's a first line connection. So if I, if I had done, if I had done work for Alan, I would go over to more. See what I've done? Little mouse or more. Request a recommendation. And it will hopefully bring up. Let's do that let's do it again. It'll, it'll bring up a screen. There you are. Whew, it worked. It worked. How do I know Alan? There are the options. So let's say Alan, Alan was a client of mine. It was while I worked my current company. Next. And then 
I've got my opportunity to write. Hi, Alan, could you write me a recommendation? It always defaults to that type of situation. I personally prefer to, to tweet, uh, hi, Alan, how are you, etc., and do that. So I'm going to shut that down. So hopefully you followed that. So go on to one of your connections, onto the more area, press rec rec request a recommendation. However, one thing you might wish to do in Alan's situation is actually to recommend him. You may have done that. So that's often the old adage, quid pro quo. So you may have had people work with you. What is wrong with actually showing that it's actually two way traffic? So there was a little tip there. Hopefully, you follow that. Time is short today. So I'm, this is quite quickity quick to show you some of the things to how to use LinkedIn. And I've only got half an hour left. So that's the recommendation. It worked. It worked. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's not working now. It's not working now. Oh, it is. Is that okay? You end, may end up with uh, things like that. So you can see what Richard said about Susie. Susie, extremely capable. I have a distinct pleasure of working, but it is about social proof. You tell me what you do. You may put the funkiest headlines, you have the greatest picture, but if you haven't got any recommendations, less powerful. Oh, that was only part one. Here you go. So you've created a winning profile. Right, next up, how to make your network work for you. First things first, you have to build a network. That's a good starting point. So how do you grow your network? Well, firstly, you will connect with other people. So what you'll do, busy slide, busy slide. Five things, so professionals you know, you've worked together, or you have worked together. Professionals you don't know you'd like to meet. People from your extended background, friends and family. People with lots of connections, people with potential and who LinkedIn suggests. So you may act, will choose to import as well your contacts, which you can do. So, so, so you think, I had that quite quickly, I do apologize, but you've got an idea of who to connect with, friends, anybody you've worked with, etc. Now the key thing here, I would always advise you is to personalize your connection requests. Oh, we're back on again. Do you want me to show you how? Okay, let's hope this works. I'm stopping sharing. I'm gonna come out here and I'm just gonna, this is random. I'm gonna type in, oh gosh, I hope this works. Can you see that? Let's hope you can see that. Is it working? Oops, I'm gonna share my screen. I am hoping, right, is that working? So I've typed in randomly John Smith, and it's gonna bring up this gentleman here. This is really taken, I don't normally do this To Right, it's brought up John Smith. I don't know John, I just thought at the top of my head. What I would choose, to, hopefully you can see that. What you choose to do, you've got an option. You see you press, what I'm showing you, press connect. Is that what, is that, yeah? Press connect. Now, I think often the mistake that businesses, people have, is that they will just press done. I would strongly advise you not to do that and to press add a note. And you can type in, hello, John. And you personalize the invitation. If you're doing it often, uh, from the mobile app you've got, it'll default to receiving the blank LinkedIn invitation. It's much more powerful to create worthwhile contacts by personalizing it. So I'm going to come out of that screen. Hopefully you can see what to do. So always press connect and add a note. So I'm sorry, I'm whizzing about here. Back to the screen. Back to the share my screen. Let's hope you can see me. I'm just going to check. You're all, I've not lost anybody. Can you? 
Yep, okay, still back to the screen then, thank you very much. So I'm back here now, yeah? Yeah, okay, Lloyd, can see the PowerPoint? Yep, right, great stuff. Next thing, how to grow your network. I would, once you've say connected up with John Smith, I would follow their network. I will show you how in a minute, come back to that one. And then ultimately to engage with them. There's no use having John Smith as a connection if you are not doing anything with it. So I'm gonna show you what to do. So, and then the last thing to do to grow your network is to promote your LinkedIn URL, which may be an email signature or on other channels. Okay, and then we're gonna do a company search using a network. So I'm just doing this again for the last time. I'm gonna come out, I'm going to share my screen again. Let's hope this works. Here we go. Right. I'm not connected up with John, but I'm gonna go back to Alan. I don't think he might be, Alan will be wondering, what is Simon doing? looking after me so hopefully you can see that still yeah great what i would recommend you do let's assume i have just connected with alan i would do this i would click on alan's connections it works now what it does do through the linkedin algorithm it brings up second line connections first. So you can see I've got quite a few second line connections. So for example, let's assume I wanted to do business with this first line connection, which is Sophie. She's the MD at the York Cocoa House. And who doesn't like chocolate? So there you go. So what I would do is this, two options. I could press connect go through the process of connecting with her, give you a personalized invitation. Alternatively, I could contact Alan and ask him for a referral to Sophie through LinkedIn. And I can see that the reason why she's highest with me is that you can see on this right hand side, we've got 61 shared connections. So Alan, and myself know 61 people, each of us, those 61 who are connected to us who know Sophie. So there's a reasonable assumption that we could get a connection with her. But again, the question always is, why are you connecting with her? So that's the first thing, using your network. We're gonna go through a live experiment now. Does anybody, I hope this works, want to shout out on the chat line right now, the name of, say, a national company. Let me rehearse this. This better work. Right, so anyone coming through on the chat line? Type in the name of a company. No one coming through on the chat line. If not, I'm going to run. Oh, there is one. There is one here on the chat line. Uh, Eddie Stobart says Pauline. Eddie Stobart. Right. What I would do is this. Eddie Stobart. Hopefully you're following Eddie Stobart. Right. Now what it does do, you can start to bring up a gentleman called Eddie Stobart. I hope I'm spelling that right. And I would probably assume it's that one. Eddie Stobart brings up, is this going to work? It does. It brings up the company name. Now, here it is nine people where I went to school were hired there. I had no idea. Some of my friends of Eton went there. That was, actually, I didn't go to Eton. I once went there though on, on a day trip. Right, so here you are. So there's 1,491 employees on LinkedIn. So I must point out this, this is not planted or anything like that. You can see about using your network. So the gentleman who's come up first is Paul Johnson. Don't, I don't know him, but he's the operations director, Eddie Stobart, and he's Wakefield Bakes. And you can see here that we've got nine shared connections. 
And then we go, second line, we go down the list in terms of, here's a good word for you. Oh, is it affinity and consanguinity? Ha! Oh, get in there. You haven't heard that word before. Mm, I haven't either. I'm going to Google it in a minute. So, so you can see that we've got nine shared connections. So if I wanted to contact Paul, I would have a pretty good go with my trying any of my nine connections or I could connect with him. The other thing it does, it brings up, in effect, I call it in these terms, a family tree or an organizational chart of everything you wanted to know about Eddie. So if I was actually looking to provide, say, training or something, there is the lady there who is the HR director at East Tobar. It starts to show the power of using your connections. And here you can click these boxes and, and also filter the search by geography. So there's so much you can do just by using, remember using Alan's connections where we've got a potential link to the York Coco House and here the random suggestion how to use your connect your network to reach the likes of Eddie Stobart. Is that okay? Right, Whew. that worked. Now, bearing in mind, we've only got about 20 minutes, so we're gonna crack on. Back again, I'm back again. So where do we get to? We said follow up your network, didn't we? We said that. Oof. Company search, we've done a company search, we look ready, so hopefully got an in the indication how to do it. Now, obviously we're gonna, we can cover LinkedIn in far more detail, but we'll do it. Quickity quick, the next thing to do after you profile a network is to keep you top of mind. What's he talking about? It's about making posts. Now, tips here. Always, and I'm saying always, if you can, accompany a post with an image or with media. Much more powerful. And you can use the likes of Canva, which I've signposted a number of times, or other graphic design to make an image much more powerful, as this has happened here with this particular online canine retailer, and here on LinkedIn with a lady who's turned her passion to business to become an online bookkeeper. The image, to me, is the most powerful. So great images. So the other way, of course, is to think about using video. So you may, and now how many of you sit there in front of a camera and you're absolutely terrified of talking? Well, the tip of the day is this. Use the native video on LinkedIn. Oh my goodness, what's he talking about? What's native video? Here we go. Unlike embedded videos, LinkedIn native video auto plays. And it's clear that metrics, both for LinkedIn and Facebook, video, native videos garner 10 times more shares than linked videos. So you'll create a video on your phone and you will use the app or to, to actually not not to link to it but to embed it sorry to have it as a native video so you'll you'll take it on your phone for example and you go onto linkedin and you'll share it into there and do it from your phone it's far more likely to work as a in terms of its performance so using native videos well hey now you got media photos you got video next thing is to optimize posts for reach and impact. Heavy slide. What this is a Google, little Google, gosh, on to next week already. Uh, LinkedIn's algorithm. It rank, it rank, going to say that, ranks posts based on personal connection, interest relevance, engagement probability. So when you're posting, and it actually, uh, in terms of performance, the aim really is to show people content that they will in interest and engage with. So the key thing there, your post should do those things. So you've got to do these things. You've got to share 
timely and relevant content. It's about trying to reach the, what LinkedIn perceives its algorithm to be of interest to your audience. Video or an image. The copy should be short and well formatted. Please do not write like Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. It won't get read. Statistic points and quotes are always fantastic. Always, always, always use the at sign and to tag people in. And I'll show you another little tip you might wish to do as well. And often to lead with a question, a statement. And use hashtags in a natural way. Sometimes people will post an army of hashtags in the, in the base of the post, but if you could write it in such a way that it's well written, and then you add the, you hashtag the words in the post, and I'll show you how. But never forget, always have a call to action. When you are posting on LinkedIn, ask yourself this question. What do you want the person reading it to do? What do you want the person reading it to do? This gentleman, um, oh, anyway, I'm joking. Apologies for not, this is something I, something I did earlier, Blue Peter. This is when I, uh, a post on LinkedIn about a previous webinar. So uh, uh, I've got other better examples to show you, but I just use a Yorkshire folk and known for thrifty discuss. Here is a webinar, how to market your business for free. And then the hashtags and the at signs there are woven in as opposed to actually just being a list. So it was way I, I, a style I have, I have adopted. Hopefully it's well formatted and people could read that in 10, 15 seconds. Courtney goes down a different route. To all the people in our network, I want you to know more about what I do. Describe your job in filling the blanks. Very provocative, but again, taking a risk there. And actually helping people with their brands. So there's two examples there about using the hashtags effectively, hopefully, and to making it interesting. And the next thing underneath that, obviously, is being provocative in terms of the way you post. Now, one way you can be extremely provocative is to use LinkedIn Live. Who's ever used LinkedIn Live? Well, unless you've applied to LinkedIn, you need to apply as a business. And actually, this is a way of doing live streaming of webinars or videos. So you might want to, to look at that using LinkedIn Live. And you do actually have to uh, approach them to do that. Time is short, but absolute two critical things is to have a LinkedIn company page and associated with a company page is a showcase page. So the idea is that here for Adobe, they have got a company page and then they have five showcase pages which are focused very much on different products and different services so i'd strongly recommend you get the company page much in the way we saw the eddie stobart page earlier and then to have showcase pages and we're going to the this is the final stop and share hope this works Right, and that doesn't work because I'm not sharing the blooming screen, Simon. What are you doing, lad? God, anyone think you know what you're doing? Right, hopefully I'm back on my page here. I'm going to come back here. Can I'm going to look for the thumbs up? Can anyone see that? Hopefully, hopefully, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we're in, we're in. So what do you know? What we're going to do is this. So little old me here, top right. Click on that, and there is a company page set up. And there's also a showcase page. So the company page 
is telling all about the company. And one of the best things you can do, and it comes on to the issue relating to the analytics. If you would like to get more engagement, you can start write a post on behalf of the company and share it. So you get a double whammy. Rather than always behaving as an individual, write it on behalf of the company, share the company post. Or here with the showcase page, I just use the showcase page myself uh, to to re, to, to um, if it works to promote the likes of the webinars that were running on behalf of Hull. And all the time, as you can see, I've kept the same image on my showcase page and on my company page. The key thing here is this on the left hand side, you get fantastic analytics. The analytics are much better on the company and showcase page than they are on the personal page. It also gives you credibility, you act on behalf of the company. So you may have, even if you're a sole trader or you've only got two or three employees, to have everybody associated with the company post on behalf of the company and others share it and you get other people to follow you. So hopefully, that was a little helpful tip there. I'll stop sharing. And the last time we're coming on to the. Here we go. Let's get this working. If we can do it, be around to share the screen. Right. There we go. So we're over here now. What are we doing over here? We're on old, old slides here. Where are we? Goodness gracious. What do we get? So we got there, we got there, we got there, we got there, we got here. So we had. Company page, showcase page. Final few things to be active in the groups. Or what tip? How about starting your own group? Oh, that's a bit left field, Simon. Well, oh, why not? So you might just start your own group. So many of you will be active in your Facebook groups. Also, you can be very active in your LinkedIn groups. Some of the most common ones, many of you may be members of the likes of the Yorkshire Mafia, 20,000 members, or your own industry, transport or travel or whatever it is, your own industry ones. Some groups rebel against people using it as a sales platform, but you can engage with people in the groups. Great way to do it. So lots of active groups on LinkedIn and Facebook. Finally, Three ways covered winning profile, network, posting, know what's working. We've touched upon this already. The analytics. So you've got different analytics you can, for personal. You create a post, you can see who's looked at the, well, how many people have looked at it, and you get an indication of that. But you do get better analytics on the company and the showcase page. I've shown you how already. Whew. Hopefully that was, a, that was a very quick whistle-stop tour through an hour. There's lots we didn't cover, naturally because it's a beast in itself. But I promised, does anybody have, I'll stop sharing now, any questions on LinkedIn? I'm looking at the screen here, hopefully. I do apologize. Liz mentioned Boots. Paulie mentioned Eddie Stobart and, and Kevin mentioned O2. I didn't cover that. Two questions have cropped up here. One from Lloyd on how to remind you this. How do you how fine do you post on LinkedIn? I'm not sure. Is it how often? Okay, let me cover those points. How do you get a showcase company? Do you want me to show you how to set up a LinkedIn company page? There's a question. So I'll share my screen and do this. Now, because I've set up my company page, it's in place already. So I hope you can see that. And it will be here under, little, under me, and you'll set up your company page. 
it says on there may be i can't remember because i can't visualize it in my head there will be a a a, a post there to um how to set up your company page and then there'll be also about about actually setting up a corporate page now if in doubt there's always the magic help and i'm going to do this can you see this company page type it there you are so hopefully there's there's lots about information about the company pages and how to do that so hopefully i've answered the question i do like the uh the brand continuity so hopefully the company page the showcase page to promote your business steve says not sure the difference between a company page and the showcase page hopefully you've answered the company page is this sort of legal entity or that you claim space and you have your employees attached to the showcase page is showcasing different elements of the company. So you may have consumer products, other products for consumers, etc. So hopefully that's answered that one. So you use it like Adobe had five showcase pages. In question here from Liz, if you have a profile and a company page and a showcase page, does it matter if you post the same thing on all of them? Or does LinkedIn like you to post different things? Great question. Personally, I think you've got two options here. One is you post on behalf of yourself and to, to reach your audience that way. Because if you let's say you've got a thousand connections, you'll reach hopefully a thousand people. If you post on behalf of the company, you may only have 20 or 30 followers. So you need to give it after that a nudge. But I do like the idea of posting on behalf of the company and then sharing it and there's no harm in doing the same thing however the showcase page is there for you to showcase something else which may be the likes of an event webinar so you might use the showcase for that kevin asked a question here are there analytic functions for persons that are leaving or disconnecting from you not i'm not 100 percent sure though it's worthwhile keeping a mental note if nothing else of the amount of people you have as connections but I don't, I'll, I'll look that i'm going to answer that one offline kevin because i don't know for sure if there's an analytic relating to the people who've left and joined it is worthwhile though sometimes going into linkedin and pruning down your connections or as i said moments earlier looking at your connections connections because it's not what you know it's who you know and one quick anecdote i did a linkedin course not so long ago there's another question coming i'll, I'll just come back to that one a linkedin course not so long ago i very rarely get totally surprised but somebody had written don't please don't, don't take this as gospel they'd written to richard branson asking him to connect and he had connected because it given them a justifiable reason to do so now I'm not for one minute I suggest you all go off and, and and do that but you might wish to aim high but that's the personalized note and the power of using your connections connections lt is there a way to download your connections and sort them i have over a thousand i think you can export your connections into a different format and then sort them through that way. I don't think you can sort them in LinkedIn other than through, you can sort them through first line uh, and all um, the length of time they've been with you, alphabetical, geographical, and there may be others, but it's sometimes worth sorting them. I think they do appear chronological to start with. So I hope that's answered your question, LT. Is there any one oh, another new message here? Is premium LinkedIn worth it? Great question. Because we didn't cover that. You can get LinkedIn premium for free for a month. I would recommend getting it free for a month, giving it a go, and seeing how you go from there. 
It's great for because you can message people who are not connected to you. You've got better insight to the people who, who have landed on your page. So you can use it that way. And it's, it's well worth using for recruiting because if you're looking for people. So I'd probably say, to answer your question, Steve, give it a try. Can it if it doesn't work? And I think you can buy it on a monthly basis. So I don't think you're tied in. But if you are headhunting, I would probably go for it. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah, thanks, Steve. Any other questions? No. Well, gosh, hasn't time flown by? So next week, what have we got next week? Well, what have we got next week? One final screen share. One final screen share. We had questions. What's up next week? That's my contact details if in case. Or you can connect with me on, you guessed it, begins with L. As always, I say the same thing. If you would like some one-to-one -one support, that is available. Just drop me a line if you would like some advice that's fully funded by the um, uh, Humble app, that's available. But next week, same time, same back channel, two o'clock, is digital marketing. Everything you wanted to know about digital marketing and afraid to ask. Again, we're going to aim it more so at the possibly the beginners or the less experienced. So that's what you'll find next week. And thank you. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Past an hour, didn't it? But no, seriously, in a short space of time, I hope I've given you some insight into making a good profile great headlines, representing your brand, how to post, and giving you some tips, you much help. So Catherine enjoyed it, Chloe enjoyed it, LT enjoyed it, my mother enjoyed it, who else enjoyed it? Well, I'm going to say, it's three o'clock. It's tea and tiffing now. But thank you very much, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in on. Stay safe. I'll hang around here for a few minutes in case anybody wants to have a chat. But if not, I'll say, as I do always, so long, farewell, our feeders and goodbye. I wish, you know, if I could sing, I'd be dangerous. <laughs>